As a black woman living in Canada, I have had my own share of racist, en racist encounters. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's staying safe wherever you are right now. A lot is going on in the world right now and I hope everybody is staying safe. I was supposed to film a hair video today but I really just I just couldn't bring myself to do it I just I didn't even have the energy I was just drained completely complete I was just completely drained and I couldn't bring myself to do it and I just said to do this video instead I am so pained I'm broken by the events going on worldwide right now and of course we all know the, the reason for it or what fueled it which is the senseless and meaningless and stupid murder of George Floyd in the US by a law enforcement officer and of course it's also fueled by over 400 years of racism segregation oppression police brutality and everything that the black community has had to endure when i saw the protests going on worldwide like literally worldwide the first thing that came to my mind was it's about time that was the very first thing that came to my mind it's about time enough is enough i think what is just making me feel this way is all the videos i've been watching recently a lot because recently a lot of videos surfaced of police brutality black people suffering in the hands of the law enforcement agencies that are that are taxed to serve and protect us there was one particular video that <sighs> that video made me cry i cried so bad when i watched that video and that was a video of um a young man a 26 year old man i think he was called daniel shiva that was gone down on the hallway in the hallway of the hotel he was staying at like in the video you will see this man literally doing everything the policeman asked him to do kneel down um lie down lie on your lie on your stomach put your hands behind your back get um come, come back up to your knees crawl towards me he was doing all that and then for no reason for no reason whatsoever this cop shot this guy down there like a chicken like he just shot him and he died there like like a chicken and the worst part of it all is that this cop was charged to court and then he was found not guilty that is the world we live in right now where someone murders another human being in broad daylight is charged to court and the court finds him not guilty it then begs to ask the question, what's the difference between then and now? Years ago, with the beginning of slavery and when the black movement started and people said, black people started fighting for their freedom, and now, what is the difference? We're still being killed by the cops, by the police for no reason. All right, you know what, let me share a post I saw on um, Taraji P. Henson's Instagram page. That just summarizes what I just said. I'm just going to put the picture here. Really, what has changed between then and now? It's still the same thing. Different times. Same reality. The truth of... And honestly, the truth is this. Hate has, has been passed down from generation to generation. And it will continue in that trend until conscious efforts are made to preach love and acceptance of everyone, irrespective of their, or irrespective of their skin color, their race, their sex, their nationality, their sexual orientation and whatnot. Until we start to teach our children and start to preach love for everybody and acceptance for everybody, this trend is going to continue. This vicious cycle is going to continue. And our great-grandchildren to come will find themselves fighting the same battles that we are fighting now that our forefathers fought. 
and the cycle will just continue. That's a sad reality. So like in this 21st century, you hear a young girl boldly and confidently tell you, I am not allowed to, play, to date a black man. Why? Because he's black? That's the only reason you're not, you're not allowed to date him? Let me just um, say a quote by Nelson Mandela where he said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin, their background, or their religion. People must learn to hate. Yeah. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can equally learn to love. Because love comes more naturally to the human mind than its opposite, which is hate. So it's, it's, as humans, it's easier for us to hate, to love, than to hate. We spend, we use so much energy to hate. When you love genuinely from your heart, you sleep better. You feel good with yourself. Your conscience is at, at peace because you're doing the right thing. When you hate your fellow human being, how do you feel? Why are we being segregated against? Like, it feels like we are renting let me, let me stop saying we like black people are renting space you know when you when you lease a house we're leasing space on this earth every freaking one of us every single one of us in this world is renting space we are all renting space our time our our time here is very limited when your lease is up when that your tenure your lease or whatever is up you go. Death is no respecter of you, anybody, no matter your age, your sex, your race, your gender. Death has no respect. Death will not even see that. We are all born the same way. We all die the same way. We all share the same red blood. We all cry love. Die and everything the same way. We... <sighs> We grow up the same way. We have the same bones. We have the same teeth. We have the same fingers. We have the same legs. Why are we being treated like animals, like we are different? Because of the colors of our skin? Honestly, looking at those pictures and videos of George Floyd's death literally gave me nightmares for days. Like I, I had anxiety attacks. And the reason why I, I had those anxiety attacks was this. I have three brothers back home. I have three younger brothers back home. And that could very easily have been any one of them. Very easily. The thing is this. Systemic racism is an unfortunate reality. It is a prejudice in our society. And we as part of that, as part of that society, we have roles to play to, in making it better. We have roles to play in correcting systemic racism. As a black woman living in Canada, I have had my own share of racist encounters. Let me just tell you a couple of them. So in my early days here, that was when I was still looking for a job. So I was going to office buildings and all that. So I went to this particular office building. I was done. I was going down. So I took the elevator. And then we got to one floor. And the elevator opened. Someone was about to enter the elevator. It was a white woman. She was about to enter when she sighted me. And then she startled. She hesitated. And then she entered. But when she entered, she went to the far end of the elevator. I didn't even understand why she was scared. I said hi to her. Of course, she didn't even answer me. And by the time we got to her floor, she literally ran out of the elevator. <laughs> I just laughed. And very recently, I had another encounter, a very similar encounter. So my husband and I were looking for an apartment because we we're moving. And so we saw some ads online and we responded to them. Uh, there was this woman, uh, my housemate spoke 
to her on the phone she had an apartment she advertised online and my housemate spoke with her um she was excited Duma was excited because um, my housemate and her niece both had the same name and then she was really really happy and then <laughs> she thought we were armenians imagine her shock when a black woman showed up because i was the one that went to view the view the apartment my housemate was working i was one that went to view it and the woman was i could see the shock i didn't even know why she was shocked i could see the shock on her face when she saw me but maybe out of courtesy or whatever she allowed me to view the apartment and i really liked it i i was so excited and then when I was about to leave, I, asked, I wanted to ask her a couple of questions. You know, you might want to ask them, oh, do you have any rules or um, is there anything you're allergic to? You don't want me to come with pets and stuff like that. So she was like, no, just go, just go. We'll talk, we'll talk later. Okay. So I called my husband on the phone. We talked about the apartment. We're so excited. By the time I go home, my husband told me that the woman has already sent her a message that she doesn't think um it works she doesn't want men to come to the house to come to her house so i called her and i told her that we won't have men over like for sleepovers but i mean we are young single women of course we will have male friends that will come to visit and go but we won't have men that will come to sleep over and she's like no 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 she doesn't even want men to come to her house at all and then at that moment at that moment i just knew that this woman was just trying to discharge us because we were black and she didn't want any black person in her house but she couldn't say it of course she couldn't say it i felt very i felt really really bad because we really liked that apartment and we had a very similar encounter too this one was a Middle Eastern man. He also put up an, an ad online for his apartment. And this time, both of us went to view it, to inspect the apartment. And this guy, um, we spoke to him on the phone. He gave us the address. And we drove like 20 minutes to go to this address to view the apartment. When he saw us, you could literally see the shock in his face. And they can't even hide the shock. That is a very funny thing. You could see the shock on his face. But of course, again, maybe out of courtesy or wherever, he allowed us to go in and view the apartment. We, had, we didn't even like this one. This one was, wasn't nice at all. We didn't like, wasn't what we were looking for. But we're just trying to be polite. But before we could even say anything, he had, he said, oh, um, Actually, his father has already promised the apartment to somebody else. <laughs> we didn't do it. We just said, okay, that's fine. But we're like, why will, why will you let us come all the way? You, we told you where we're coming from. You let, you let us come all the way. And then after viewing, you then tell us your father has already promised the apartment to somebody else. Clearly, this guy didn't even want us to stay in the apartment because we were black just clear like i'm not i know some people might think oh it's is our mind oh that's what we that's the way we felt but no that's not it when you know something when you've lived as a black person all your life and someone reacts to you by just seeing you you will know the reason they're reacting to you that way is because of the color of your skin you will know honestly these encounters pained me like i felt so bad by these encounters but imagine if i had to okay like i'm so pained by these encounters right and this is the reason why hate is passed down from generation to generation imagine if i had like tomorrow i have my children and because of this anger i tell them terrible things about armenians or middle easterns or whatever it is and then they also find themselves hating people from that race simply because their mother said this and that and that. And that's how the trend has been going all this while. This is the reason why we are still where we are right now. This is the reason why in the 21st century, in the year 2020, we are still protesting against racism.
nevertheless though i am proud of my black skin i am proud of my african hair i am proud of proud of my melanin i am also very proud of all the black people out there that have to work twice as hard to prove themselves or to be taken seriously every day now like my ever since this whole thing started my prayer point has just changed like every day i pray for an inclusive world where everyone is treated equally and given equal rights and opportunities i pray for a world that doesn't see race color or religion i pray for a world where our children are allowed to roam the streets no matter the time without the fear of being gone down by the police simply because of the color of their skin. I'm just going to end here. Like, I think I've said enough. But I'm going to leave you guys with this quote from Kofi Annan, where he says, If tolerance, respect, and equality permeate the family life, they will translate into values that shape societies, nations, and the world. I don't know if you got that. But I can repeat it if you want me to. It goes like this. If tolerance, respect, and equality permeate family life, they will translate into values that shape societies, nations, and the world. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me just go back and continue thinking <laughs> but seriously guys it's time for a change i'll see you guys in my next video bye